All right, so it's been a long time since we brewed. Uh, I want to say like a couple of years. Uh, just haven't really had the time to do it. I did like a remodel at the house. All my stuff was packed away, but I've been itching to brew. And um, today's, the, today's finally that day. And getting back into it, I feel like there's gonna be a lot of things that uh, I kind of forget how to do. Like I don't really remember like how to do all my pH balances, messing with salts to get my water uh, profile right. So we're just gonna do a simple smash today. I'm not messing around with the water. I'm not adding any, the only thing I added to the water, which I have getting up to temperature right now, is a Campton tablet. And I never used to use that in the past because I used reverse osmosis water. And I never felt like I needed to worry about like any like the chlorine and that. Now the water I'm using now is spring water, Zephyr Hills, which is what we have down here in um, Florida. If you're outside of Florida, I don't know if you're familiar with that or not, but it's a spring water. Um, it's not a tap water. I don't really, not to hate on Zephyr Hills, I don't really care for the taste of Zephyr Hills that much, but I happen to have it at home, so we're gonna use that. I ordered 10 pounds of two row. We're, do, we're doing a smash, that's all we're gonna do here today, keep it simple. And then I had, now this is old hops, Challenger hops, I had two ounces of Challenger hops in my fridge, so I figured we'd go with that. And, um, and I had some safe ale 05 packets. So I did a yeast starter last night, and we're gonna use that for yeast. So we got our straight water going right now up to 154. We're gonna mash for one hour, and then we're gonna pull it. We're not gonna sparge, and we're gonna add, I think, we're gonna try to do like an hour boil, but I think I more so wanna boil down to kind of what, like maybe six gallons worth. Uh, figure waste and whatnot when I transfer it into the fermenter will be kind of where we wanna be. So we're gonna add, 15 minutes into our boil, we're gonna add the first ounce of Challenger, and then 45 minutes into the boil, assuming it's a one hour boil, we're gonna add the other ounce. So that'll give us kind of a nice balance between bitterness and aroma. Challenger's not really, from what I, I looked it up right before um, this brew day, Challenger's more for like your English bitters, and this is gonna kind of be more of like a pale ale, but the good thing about home brewing, you can just do whatever you want, right? When you make your beer, it's your call. So. We'll see how it turns out, and I'm interested to see how Zephyr Hills by itself, without adding any of the salts, makes the beer taste, because that'll be a lot easier to brew in the future, instead of having to, uh, to run a calculator online and figure out my pH. So yeah, glad you guys are watching. If you haven't watched some of our other homebrew videos, check that out. If you guys are fans of our old videos, thanks for sticking around, and uh, hope you guys enjoy this video. was only like I don't know, like two bucks a pound I want to say on Amazon first time I ordered them all from Amazon but I guess I'm gonna start doing it in the future unless there's any northern brewer has like discounts or something you know? I think I'm gonna add some more water to it just get it loose tons of room All right, so we did one hour at 154, which was our, our uh, mash temp, but we're gonna mash out. I think it used to lift up to like 170. Let me see if I can remember how to do this here. Uh-oh. Here we go. So I'm gonna bump this up to 170 in this bottom number. This is the claw hammer supply. For anybody who hasn't watched any of the old brewing videos we used to do, the claw hammer supply 110. Um, Brewing a bag system, which is awesome. I love it. All right, so 170. Let's set it right there. 
So basically this is telling us what our current temp is because we have um, a temperature probe inside here. And so it's it's measuring that and then the um, what we want to set our temp at with the 170 now, it controls the heating element and then also this pump right here which we have circulating. So uh, so the system's awesome, I love it. It worked, it worked so good before. I don't know what the price is on it now. I got in back in the day when they were first starting out and uh, it works It works awesome. I know, they. I think SS Brutech, which I use their fermenter and their glycol chiller, they have something similar to this now. I don't know if it runs off the 110, which for me is the biggest thing because I don't have a 220 available. Um, but yeah, if you guys haven't checked them out, you guys gotta check them out. This system for the average home brewer using a 110, this is what it's all about. It doesn't come with like this insulated uh, bubble wrap that I put on it. But um, I did that, I think they even sell a neoprene sleeve now, which I might actually look into, but this just helps you get to your temperatures a lot quicker. Um, and it's a noticeable difference. It's worth doing if you if you want to take the time to do that. You get this at Home Depot for probably like 10, 20 bucks and just cut it out. I don't know how much your neoprene sleeve goes for, but I'm gonna look into that, especially if we start brewing again more. But um, yeah, so we'll let this get up to 170. We'll pull the basket, we'll let it drain. We'll see what our volume's at and we'll start to boil. I'm assuming it's going to be about a one hour boil at our hops and uh, yeah, that'll be almost the conclusion of our brew day. So let's see how it goes. Uh, Alright, so we got our temp up to 170, so now we're going to start our boil. Um, I'm going to turn the pump off right now. We're going to set our temperature up to at least 212, right? So I like to just do it kind of like as high as I can go. I think we set it usually to like 250. So, I'm just gonna go ahead and do this. I think 212 is boiling the tap, I'm pretty sure. Let's see how high this can go. So obviously like it's, it'll get to the point where it boils, but um, obviously with a 110 or 120, it's, it, it struggles for sure, but it'll get there. Probably just set to like 220, I should be good. All right, so we'll set it there, 220, set. I'm gonna go ahead and turn my pump on. Okay. So that's gonna stop the circulating of the wart. Shut my valve off. Let's see. basket. So we'll kind of just let this drain a little bit. We'll see where our volume's at. I'm hoping that we'll be above five gallons because obviously we're gonna have some boil off. Um, if we're not, whatever, no big deal. It'll be kind of a mess up. I was expecting a couple mess ups throughout the day. So if we're under the five gallons, that's cool. We'll still do our one hour boil. And with loss and everything, we'll just be short on our keg, but it is what it is. We'll see in a little bit. Whew. Dank as heck. Yeah. When they first opened, they they uh, smoke weird. Almost get like a woody kind of like. Smell. <laughs> oh man. Like lemony, woody kind of. It was pretty dank when I when I opened it. All right, so 15 minutes into the boil, I'm gonna set a boil over here. So we can add this hop spider in. One ounce challenger. All right, there we go. We'll be back in a half hour. All right, so we're down to the last 15 minutes of the boil and we're at five gallons now. We're probably a little bit below five gallons. So I'm not too worried about cutting off in an hour. But we're gonna add a Warflock tab tablet now just to kind of help everything coagulate at the end um, get a cleaner beer I'm also going to put half a teaspoon which is about yay amount 
of yeast nutrient. So I'll just put that in there. And then obviously our one ounce, which will be our second ounce of Challenger hops into the hops later. All right, 15 minutes left, we'll, uh, we'll start cooling it down. Also, um, right now we'll start um, connecting our hoses for our plate chiller and start letting the boiling ward go through that and sanitize that for us. All right, so we've been cooling our wort down. We have down to 94.7 and going down with our plate chiller. So I'm gonna go ahead and usually when I get around 100, I start to transfer it into the fermenter. So I'll have my SS Brutech Chronicle fermenter that we're gonna transfer into. I'll let it get down to pitching temp, which will be like around 70, probably a little bit less. I'll hook up the glycol chiller, let it start cooling down in there. Um, so yeah, so right now what we're gonna be doing is transferring over and the big thing right now is just make sure it doesn't get infected, right? So we wanna do it kind of quick and get it sealed off. Um, but at the same time, it's gonna continue to cool, which is gonna you know, draw in oxygen. So I think I'm gonna use the stopper, the styrofoam stopper that I have on the yeast starter to put on there just to make sure it doesn't get infected while it drops the last you know, 20 degrees or so. So here we go. And then we're just gonna do this kind of quick here. If you can do me a favor, John, could you just hit the pump on for me? All right. Pump on. There we go. All right, so now we got everything transferring over into here. And we'll let that run and we'll cap it off. And we'll just let it cool down a little bit more until we pitch our yeast. All right, so we have our wart right now inside our chronicle fermenter. I got, I got my glycol chiller cooling down to 32 degrees. It's only at 42.6 right now. Um, I set my pump to kick on at 65 degrees because the safe hill is between like 59 and 72 degrees. So 65 feels like a good medium. And now I haven't used this before, but this is the tilt hydrometer and I got it a long time ago and I just never used it. Surprisingly, the battery is still working. So it's going to be my first time using that. Um, so right now we're at 72, which is safe to put our, our yeast in. Plus I have a yeast starter. So we're just going to open this up. I'll pitch my yeast. And we'll drop the tilt hydrometer in, and that'll be a wrap for our brew day. So here we go. All right, I'm gonna try not to throw my stir bar in there, my stir plate. I'm just gonna clamp this down. I have to go get a clamp, but that'll be the bubbler. And that's it. That's a wrap on our brew day. Thanks for watching. Uh, comment, like, subscribe. We'll see you guys in the next video.